Hey gang, it's Steve with Guitar Center. We're at NAMM 2024. We're hanging out with John Petrucci in the Ernie Ball Music Man booth. We're going to check out the latest Majesties. How you doing, John? I'm doing great. Are you having a great NAMM so far? Well, this is actually my first event. Nice. Yeah, so, so far so good. Well, welcome. Thank you. Are you ready for the chaos on the floor? No. <laughs> <laughs> no one ever really is until you get there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have a slew of new colors coming through, and let's start off with the one uh, that you have here in your hands. Sure. Well, first of all, I, I know you expect me to say this, but I think these are the best colors oh, nice. that we've collectively come up with so far, which is a huge statement because the colors have been incredible. Yeah. The Majesty is 10 years old, so, you know. Well, that's a happy birthday that's for you happy guys. Happy birthday, yes. Yeah. So this is a color that we talked about doing for about three years or so that was very difficult to do. Um, it's called Arctic Aurora, and it's based on Northern Lights or the Aurora Borealis. It's a burl top, which really kind of, you know, brings out the color fade. You have purple and blue and green and yellow and yeah. yeah. It's and they, stunning. It's stunning. I mean, it's crazy. Well, you guys would be able to see in the close-up, but it's crazy to see the, the gradient change. Yeah, it's it really is. And you know, something about an Aurora is that it's it's something that moves. Right, and this paint job is static, but I think with the burl and the, the, the transition, it, it kind of gives off the vibe that it's moving a bit. And that's really nice. And each one of these colors has a, a very descriptive and specific name. Yeah. Is that sort of uh, a goal that you're achieving when you name and then you reach for the color, or is it something that you just sort of come upon? Right, I would say it's, it's a little bit of both. Like some of the color names are inspired by the initial aim of the color. So in this case, it's Arctic Aurora because I knew we were going to do a Northern Lights guitar. And, you know, instead of calling it Northern Lights, something a little more creative. The one you'll see later, the Blue Ink, I wanted to do a Blue Ink guitar. So it's, it's named that. But sometimes we'll make a color and not have a name for it. And that's, that's fun, too, just kind of looking at it. What does it evoke? Mm -hmm. And trying to come up with something that's creative. It's always a challenge and interesting because, you know, you have black, red, blue, green. Yeah. So... How many different ways can you say that? Yeah, exactly. So there's usually something about the finish that will pop out and be like, you know what? That's something that's a little unique about that. Cool. And that makes the name more interesting. I love naming guitar colors. Yeah. Well, let's go through some of the unique colors and sure. their names. Gotcha. So this, again, this is the Arctic Aurora. This would be one of the full maple top versions. The other maple top version is called Blue Ink, which is also a burl top. And the third one is Red Nebula. Now we One of my favorite guitar finishes on the Majesty of all time, and we put it on the JP-15 as well, was called Purple Nebula. And I played it, you know, all on albums, tours and everything. Loved it, it's a quilted top, again, full maple. All the, the Ball family came to one of my shows in LA, and we're all standing there, it's like, why don't we just do this guitar in red? Yeah. <laughs> Let's do a Red Nebula. So we have a Red Nebula. We have, uh, a, a very special guitar that's a white iridescent. It's called Her Majesty's Request. Great. And my wife, Raina, named it very good. because very good. it was her color request. Oh, cool. You know, she had this idea for a white iridescent guitar and it came out so great, you know, came to the house. I was like, could we actually make that available to everybody? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's one of the colors and that's an opaque color. The black frosting, so that's a good example of, you know, a black guitar. What do you name it to make it more original? And it kind of has this sparkle that popped. And I was thinking, all right, frosting, nice. black frosting, another opaque finish. And then the other three are with the shield. Right. So it's the majesty where you have the maple uh, top shield, not the full top like this. Right. And one of them reminded me of Wicked on Broadway. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's green, so gravity green. Cool. I couldn't call it alpha, but green. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I'm being nerdy right now. Um, <laughs> The other one is a blue, again, you know, what do you call a blue guitar? Yeah. Uh, but it just had a nice silky look, so blue, blue silk. Nice. And um, just being completely upfront, I named the red one before I saw it in person. So I might have to change the name because it's kind of more pomegranate-y in person. So okay. we'll get back to you on that, that color. Okay, great. Yeah. <laughs> so the naming quest continues on that one. quest continues, exactly. Is there ever an instance where you sort of overshoot what you thought you were going to get color-wise, and then you, you're like, well, this is pretty cool, and let's stick with it? You know, anything that I could sort of imagine, yeah. Ernie Ball Music Man has a way to make it happen and then exceed my expectations. You know, I literally just saw these for the first time in person 
moments before you you walked in wow. and i'm i'm just floored yeah. i'm blown away you know you know we're talking finishes and colors but it's the whole design of the instrument again the majesty is is 10 years old this year and the things that that we did with the shape with the uh the control outlook uh, outlay and the features i think it's just so innovative and it's just such a testament to what ernie ball music man can do you know, there's there's no there's no limits. Uh, I'm wondering if it's kind of like a mood ring. Mm. Would the guitar that you go to pick up and play would the color be related to how you're feeling at that time? It, probably. I'm I'm not sure. I was never asked that question. So I maybe subconsciously I uh -huh. I do that. Um, I don't think it's purposeful. You know, but maybe yeah, maybe subconsciously it's like oh man, I want to write something real badass. I'm gonna pick up that black. You know, so. So uh, I don't know. I'll think about it. <laughs> well, it's a stunning instrument in its playability and its yeah. ergonomics. And I'm curious, after the last 10 years mm -hmm. of so many players across different styles adopting it, how does that make you feel as being like, this is my thing and now they're taking it on to make it their own? That's a great question because to me, that's the most satisfying and rewarding part of being able to create a signature instrument with a company who does it so well is that I have these things that I sort of desire and, and require and, and like about the instrument. And the fact that we put those into a design and then other people say, you know what? That's so cool. I love, I love the way the neck feels. I love the way the bridge is so smooth. I love the way I can access all the, the frets. And that'll go across all different genres, not just what I do and, you know, prog metal or whatever. But I see players playing all different styles on these instruments. And to me, that's so rewarding. Yeah. It's like, yeah, you, you like what we came up with. You know what I mean? Like you're digging the same thing. You, you don't know how many people say, oh, man, I just love that you put like rubber around the knob, yeah. like little yeah. details. Or I love that I can get my thumb all the way up here. Um, and of course, the way the guitars sound, they're just, they can do anything. So That's very cool. So for the kids out there at home yeah. who are nationwide, inside a guitar center right now, you know, bashing away on a majesty. That's right. What advice do you have for them to sort of like find their own sound to, you know, eventually have their own signature instrument? Well, I, the advice I can offer is, is sort of what I did myself. You know, that's the, that's the best way I can describe uh, how to get there. For me, and this, we've had many conversations about this, that it's very different now uh, as far as the way that young people learn guitar, right? So for me, developing my own sound was the result of constantly playing and jamming with other kids in the neighborhood and all different types of bands. You know, I would go from house to house and, you know, these guys would be into metal and these guys would be into like the Grateful Dead and these guys would be into jazz and these. And so that's how I cut my teeth and developed my own style. That and, and learning all the, as much as I could. I know it's different now. I know it's, it, you know, a lot of young musicians don't have that experience of, of doing that live, you know, jamming, improv, improv thing. So that would be my best advice. If you can do that, if you got buddies who play, play with them, yeah. you know, play with guys that are better than you. Play, you know, in, in situations that make you uncomfortable. <laughs> you're going to learn something. You're going to stretch out. You're going to find, you know, your strengths and weaknesses. Yeah. And don't be afraid of it, you know? It's not just sitting there like on Instagram or YouTube and like seeing exactly how it's done. You know, I would urge a lot of players to like shut that off, see if you could learn it without seeing how it's done. I remember hearing Eruption. I had, I was like, that's not a guitar. How, <laughs> how could that be done? You know, to me, the guitar was like, you know, yeah. what is that? I didn't know what a phaser pedal was. I didn't know what tapping was because you didn't see it. Yeah. So what that does is I think it kind of opens up a, a different part of your brain, your creativity, yeah. your imagination. So, yeah, try that experiment. Yeah. Don't look up how to do it on YouTube. Okay. Just try to learn it by ear. Nice. Very cool. Okay, final question yeah. here. In addition to being a wildly influential guitar player, you are a wildly influential beard haver. <laughs> So do you have any piece of advice for anybody out there who is trying to get a majestic beard? Wow, I can't believe I'm getting a GC beard <laughs> question my, as my beard covers my, my past. Here's my best advice. Uh, make it look purposeful. Okay. 
Okay. Right? So there's all different beard styles, but there, there's a difference between just like letting your beard grow wild and like having a purpose to it. Nice. So the shape, yeah. you know, they're deliberate things. And of course, you know, I, I can't answer that question without saying, you have to buy my Captain Fawcett <laughs> Nebula <laughs> beard products. Okay, great, great. <laughs> Make sure it smells good and Absolutely. looks good. So, yeah, thanks for the question. You, yours, you're getting there. Yeah, one day I'm going to hit puberty and this thing's going to really take off. <laughs> that, you know, here's a funny guitar beard thing is that, like, there's a certain, I think I might be past it, but there's a mid length where when I'm taking the guitar off, my beard gets caught in the str oh, yeah. in the str <laughs> We'll have to invent a new Ernie Ball accessory that's like a beard caddy. I, I actually had my tech. He looked at me like I had three heads. I'm like, can you come up with a uh, a beard protector for the strap lock? You know? Yeah. Anyway. Nice. Well, like John says, with everything that he does in life, musically and beard-wise, do it with intention. This has been the latest Majesty Collection from Ernie Ball Music Man. Thank you so much, John. Thank you.